We have a major heat wave that continues to rage across the western and the central U.S. over the next several days. We have severe weather on the northern and eastern periphery of that heat wave, and we are tracking a tropical depression with increased confidence for it to impact the southeast coast. As we go into the weekend and early next week, we'll get you all of the details that you need to know in today's weather forecast. So make sure to subscribe to the channel here at Weather on the Go. Like the video by giving it a thumbs up. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. We'll get to those later on today. Happy Thursday, August 1st, 2024, everyone. And yes, it is August 1st, and we are in the middle of summer here. So we have widespread heat alerts across the United States here. In orange, we have heat advisories. Those extend up here into the Pacific Northwest and then down here across the South Central and Southeastern and then Eastern U.S. here up the east coast we even have excessive heat warnings here in the pink shaded colors across the mid mississippi valley the central and southern plains the northern rockies and parts of the pacific northwest as well so definitely some widespread heat out there and the culprit is this ridge of high pressure as we've been seeing it build further to the west over the past 24 hours and that will continue as we go through today and especially as we end the week on friday august 2nd look at that big heat Heat wave across portions of the Four Corners region and the Rockies. And looking at the high temperatures this afternoon, we're going to be well into the 90s across the majority of the Great Plains, down here to the southeast and then up the east coast. And then out west as well, all the way up into Washington State, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana. A lot of those areas in the Pacific Northwest will be back into the 90s this afternoon. And those heat index values this afternoon, when you factor in the moisture content in the atmosphere, this is what the feel-like temperatures will be to the body as you walk outdoors. And you can see this is actually in shade, folks. We could see 113 in Tulsa, 102 in Dallas-Fort Worth, 98 for a heat index there in Jackson, Mississippi, 105 in the Music City there in Nashville, and 107 in the Savannah, Georgia area. So widespread excessive heat across the southeast today that extends even into Friday afternoon, August 2nd with triple digit heat now across the Pacific Northwest from Montana, back into Idaho, back into Oregon, Washington State, some areas even in Washington State there in Eastern Washington State could be approaching 110 for afternoon highs tomorrow. And you can see those heat index values back into the 105 to 115 degree Fahrenheit range across the Gulf Coast here from Texas eastward to the Carolinas and Virginia as we go into tomorrow afternoon. And we are looking here at the calculated soil moisture anomaly levels from yesterday and you can see pretty dry we have those soils across portions of the mid-atlantic parts of the eastern ohio valley parts of the central plains but more so up here into the pacific northwest more widespread below average soil moisture and that's why our temperatures are going to catapult so quickly from morning into the afternoon and unfortunately will be encouraging more fires across this region. So the heat, the humidity, and all the dry soil will be encouraging a lot of these fires to grow and intensify, unfortunately, across the Pacific Northwest today. You can see where the densest smoke is today across Northern California and Oregon. And then tomorrow it overspreads Washington State, Oregon, Idaho, and Western Montana with that dense wildfire smoke. Looking here at storm reports from yesterday on your uh, Wednesday, the uh, July 31st time frame, we did see a lot of severe weather reports across the upper Midwest, back into the Central Plains, in that bullseye where we had the slight and enhanced risk areas. We actually did have tornadoes, three of those reported, one in southeastern South Dakota and a couple of them on the Nebraska-Iowa state line. All these blues, those are wind reports. The greens, those are hail reports. We had 302 severe weather reports yesterday, all told. And here is the jet stream orientation today. There's that trough. It's going to be positively tilted as we go through today. And you can see that's going to be pushing further to the east and then continuing into the Ohio Valley, mid-Atlantic on tomorrow as well. So slight risk of severe weather as we go through your Thursday today across the Ohio Valley, southern Illinois, parts of Indiana, Ohio, western West Virginia. 
Virginia and much of the state of Kentucky. Marginal risk extending outside of that back into Wisconsin, back over here into the southeast, and even into portions of the southern plains as well. Don't sleep on the severe weather in Amarillo, Oklahoma City, or Tulsa with all that heat out there. And it's mainly going to be for damaging winds and hail, but a 2% chance of a tornado within a 25-mile radius is possible for places like Green Bay, La Crosse, Milwaukee, down to Rockford, Illinois, and then over here into places like Paducah, Kentucky, Louisville, Lexington, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, and then further east toward Charleston, Huntington there, and even into the Columbus, Dayton areas in Ohio as we go through today. Scattered storm coverage as we go through the afternoon, moving through Illinois and into Indiana. More explosive storm development from Ohio back into Kentucky as we go into the evening hours, and then that will start to dwindle a little bit with still some isolated severe coverage as we go into early Friday morning. This is after midnight. And again, don't sleep on some of these storms over here into places like Amarillo, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Wichita. There's still good be some strong storms even after midnight with all the heat energy out there as we go into early Friday. And then going into Friday, level one out of five marginal risk extending into the mid-Atlantic, into the southeast here. So we're going to be watching out for that and some pockets of some stronger storms in places like eastern Colorado, southeastern Arizona as well. The tornado threat all across the lower 48 tomorrow is less than 2%. So that's some good news here. Uh, mainly going to be damaging winds and some large hail. Friday morning, some ongoing isolated storms from the southern Great Lakes into the Ohio Valley. Mid-Atlantic will continue. Maybe a few storms over here in central Oklahoma, in and around places like Elk City, Oklahoma City, and the Pawnee area. We'll be keeping a close eye on that. Friday afternoon, you can see storms, peak heating of the day, developing. And these are these individual storms, so we're going to be seeing more of those uh, supercells and multi-cell clusters, stuff like that, um, with damaging winds, hail, but a very low tornado risk, and that will continue into Friday evening. Overall, the heaviest rains will be up here into the Ohio River Valley as we go through Saturday. Saturday, August the 3rd, and the heaviest rains from eastern Illinois through much of central and southern Indiana much of the state of Ohio into east, central and eastern Kentucky. That extends into West Virginia and Pennsylvania. That's where we could be seeing over an inch, maybe over two inches in localized areas in this region. So be watching out for some isolated flash flooding. Heading into the weekend, Saturday, August 3rd into Sunday, August 4th, the ridge of high pressure will retrograde further to the west, and this will encourage well above normal temperature anomalies across especially southwestern Canada and places like British Columbia. So Vancouver is going to be warming up but also into the Pacific Northwest, Seattle, Portland, into the Boise, Idaho area, Cheyenne, Wyoming, Helena, Montana. A lot of these areas will be warming up 20 degrees above average for this time of year. And you can see that Saturday afternoon, more 90s, more triple digits, and that'll even extend into Sunday afternoon. Although it looks like into Montana, we start to cool off a little bit with a cold frontal boundary starting to drop south from Canada into the northern couple of states, the northern tier of the United States. And looking at the precipitation trends this weekend on Saturday, under that very strong ridge, it's going to be hard pressed to see any clouds, let alone any precipitation. So bone dry conditions out west only exacerbating the fire conditions out there. And you can see we're going to be seeing more widespread rains across the northeast and the east coast all the way down to Florida on Saturday and into Sunday. And you can see where the heaviest rains will be, really the East Coast, Maine to Florida and everywhere in between there, including the I-95 corridor and some moisture up here in the northern tier of the United States as that cold front extends down from Canada into places like Montana, the Dakotas, Minnesota, and northern Wisconsin. Pockets there of over a half inch, over an inch of rain will be possible, That, but that will likely be more localized. Speaking of down into the southeast and speaking of Florida, we are keeping close tabs on what could be a very impacting storm as we head into the weekend and early next week. Here is the view, uh, view of the satellite imagery this Thursday afternoon on August 1st, you can see all the clustering of thunderstorm convection down here entering into the eastern Bahamas, the greater Antilles here for places like Haiti, into the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico and the eastern Bahamas. That's going to be pushing westbound over the next couple of days. And the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida has increased odds to a 70% chance of development of a tropical cyclone, a tropical depression as we go towards Cuba 
and then towards Florida or the eastern Gulf of Mexico over the next couple of days. And this is a very ripe environment. Look at these sea surface temperature anomalies here. The shelf waters on the west coast of Florida here from the Big Bend all the way down towards Tampa towards Fort Myers, Naples, all the way down to the Key West areas here. And even Cuba's uh, Cuba shelf waters here in Western Cuba are very warm as well. So a very impacting system is possible here. And the latest ensemble guidance here from the European ensemble models has that also agreeing with the National Hurricane Center, a 60 to a 70% chance that this will become a tropical depression over Cuba and then extending into the Eastern Gulf of Mexico. Mexico as we go through the weekend, especially through Sunday, August the 4th. Now our next name on the list is Debbie. So that is what this system will be named if it is named and is likely to do so. Let's go over a couple weather models here that are in agreement actually with the track of the system here. Things could still change over the next couple of days, but it does look pretty good here. The GFS model has this developing over Western Cuba as a weak tropical depression on Saturday. This moves over the very warm waters of the Eastern Gulf, those shelf waters of Florida we were just talking about near the Big Bend, just west of Tampa and just west of Fort Myers and Naples. And that explodes to a 997 millibar low, likely a tropical storm, and maybe even can't rule out even a hurricane by Sunday that will bend back across northern Florida into coastal Georgia there. So Savannah, Georgia, up there toward Charleston, West Virginia, and Myrtle Beach by, by Monday into Tuesday, early next week. And then it's possible. The GFS has us going right over the coastline there of Myrtle Beach and up there towards the Wilmington area of North Carolina as well on Tuesday into Wednesday. That could be trouble for strong surf and rip currents, a lot of inland flooding and coastal flooding for the Carolinas into early next week on the GFS model. Looking at the ICON model, also in agreement over western Cuba here pushes this up into portions of the northeastern and eastern Gulf of Mexico on Sunday. Although it's not like the GFS model, it's not strengthening this as quickly, but then it moves over portions of northern Florida and coastal Georgia on Monday, and then it re-strengthens re over portions of the open waters just off the coast of the Carolinas, again from Charleston up there toward Myrtle Beach and Wilmington. We'll be keeping an eye on that Tuesday into that Wednesday time frame. So that is what is an agreement with the GFS and this icon model. Right now, this is very preliminary, but rainfall totals, if it did take this track, could be pretty significant in coastal areas here of western Florida up into northern Florida there and into like Savannah, Georgia area. The coastline, the entire east coast of the Carolinas, significant rain. And some of this could be double-digit totals, especially up there in the South Carolina, according to the GFS model. And pretty similar is the ICON model with those positionings of the rainfall totals and also the amounts potentially getting up into the double digits up there towards South Carolina. So we have to continue to watch this as we go over the next couple of days. And you bet we'll be doing that right here on Weather on the Go. So forecast breakdown for you today. Major heat wave across the western and the central U.S. Make sure sure to stay hydrated. If you venture outdoors for your job or anything like that, make sure to find shaded areas and frequent breaks in air conditioning. Very, very important. Severe weather will be possible for today into tomorrow from the Ohio Valley to the East Coast. Damaging winds and large hail will be the main mode of severe weather, but a few isolated tornadoes will also be on the table there. And there is growing consensus, growing confidence of a tropical depression to be named Debbie as we go into the weekend, very close to Florida here, and then up the southeast coast. We'll be tracking that all weekend for you right here on this channel. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe to Weather on the Go down below by hitting the subscribe button. Like the video down below by giving it a like. Share this video with friends, family, and on social media. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today, and I hope everyone has a wonderful first day of August out there.